So, in the last uh, class we have seen how to remove the useless symbols from a context free grammar. We have also seen how to remove the epsilon productions from a context free grammar. But if the language contains epsilon you must have a rule of the form s goes to epsilon and you must make sure that s does not appear on the right hand side of any production. The next result we will see is that we can remove the unit productions also. What is a unit production? A unit production is of the form A goes to B, a non terminal going into B, another non terminal. Such a production is called a unit production. So, you may want to get rid of these rules. As I mentioned, if you introduce too many of this unit production in a compiler, the if you want to represent a programming language by a grammar and use a compiler for that, then if you have too many of this unit production the compile time will be more. So, you want to avoid these unit productions. So, how to remove these unit productions? First of all you must see from which non terminals find all pairs. A B such that A from A can go to B need not be in one step, but in many steps ok. That is you are starting with the grammar G is equal to N T P S and in this grammar you want to remove the unit production without affecting the language generated. Now, you split P into two sets P 1 union P 2, where P 1 is a set of unit productions and P 2 is the other set on unit. Now, you construct an equivalent grammar g dash is equal to n t p dash same non terminals same terminals, but the production rules are different. What is p dash? p dash consists of all p 2 all p 1 will be removed, but instead you will add some more rules and what are these rules you are going to add. Now, for every pair a b for every pair a b such that from a you can go to b by unit productions. It may not be in one step if a goes to b is a unit production you can go in one step or if you have a goes to c, c goes to b then you will go to b from a in two steps. So, for every pair such that a, d, a goes to b add rules a goes to beta if b goes to beta belongs to p 2. If you have a rule b goes to beta in p 2 then you add the rule a goes to beta to this. So, p dash consists of p 2 plus all such rules added all such rules added ok. Then you can show that L g is equal to L g dash. Again a formal proof on the number of steps and so can, uh, can be given induction on the number of steps, but informally you can see like this we can see that suppose you have a step from which you derive b and in a derivation from s you may have a sentential form say alpha a gamma somewhere you get gamma. Then after some steps making use of unit productions only you get alpha b gamma because from a you are able to derive b and these steps are 
using only unit productions. These steps use only unit production. Then after some step you may be using some rule b goes to beta i. So, after the next step may be alpha beta i gamma then etcetera. But in the grammar g dash which we have constructed you have added the rule a goes to beta i you have added the rule this. So, instead of going through all these steps start in this is happening in g and in g dash what will happen is you are getting alpha a gamma and instead of applying these unit productions and then applying b goes to beta i you straight away apply a goes to beta i. So, alpha beta i gamma you get in one step. Then the derivation in g dash can proceed. So, the effect is the same instead of applying a derives b and then b derives beta i straight away you are using the rule a goes to beta i and deriving this in one step. Okay. So, by removing the unit productions and adding the rules of the form a goes to beta the resultant language is not changed the language generated is the same. So, it is advantageous to do this rather than use the unit protections, but one thing you must be careful the number of rules here will be enormously increased depends on suppose I have such pairs a b 5, 6 or 7 pairs like that the number of rules is going to increase very much, but if I have just one pair we can just remove it and so on. So, the number of rules in p dash will be much more than the number of rules in p. And when you use a parser to reduce a string you at every point you may be able you may have to check which rule is can be used for reduction. Then if the number of rules is too much every rule you must try. So, that lookup procedure will be more it may take more time. So, you have to see that there is a balance that in while removing the unit production you are not adding too many of other rules. But anyway this result tells you that you can get rid of unit productions it is not necessary to use the unit productions. <coughs> Let us take an example. A simple example let me take. S goes to A S B, S goes to A, A goes to C A D, A goes to C D. If I have this grammar, what is the language generated? The language generated is first you will use this rule many times then from s you go to a then use this to generate equal number of c's and d's. So, it will be a power n c power m d power m b power n m greater than or equal to 1, but n can be 0 also. Okay. This will be this will be the language generated and there is a unit production. Now, we want to get rid of this unit production. So, by this procedure you split it into p 1 and p 2 p 2 will consist of these three rules p 1 will consist of this. So, remove this you have to remove but p 2 you have to keep as it is, 
So, these three rules you keep. Then you have a pair S A, right? Then whenever there is a pair S A, the right hand side you replace with the right hand side for every rule with A on the left hand side. So, what are the rules you will be adding now? The rules you will be adding will be S goes to C A D. S goes to C D. So, instead of applying S goes to A, then A goes to C A D, you can straight away apply this rule. Instead of applying S goes to A, A goes to C D, you can straight away use this rule. Now, look at the grammar without this rule, but adding to these two rules, you will see that any number of equal number of A's and B's can be generated using this rule. Then you can go from S to this or S to this. You see that at least one C and one D must be generated. Use this many times, then use this one C D will be generated. Use this many times as many times you want, and then use this once and then this you will get c square d square. If you want to get more, use this many times for a power n b power n, then c cube d cube if you want, use this once, use this once, use this once. Then any number of c power m b power m you can d power m you can generate with proper combination of these three rules. Just one C D alone you want means you use this rule after applying this rule. Okay, you need not have to apply this rule at all because n can be 0 also, just C D also belongs to the language. You can start with S yes and derive C D. There n can take the value 0, 1, 2, etcetera. M takes the value 1, 2, 3. There should be at least 1 C and 1 D. Okay. So, this is the way you get rid of the unit reductions. So, we have seen how to remove the useless symbols that is from every symbol should occur in a derivation like uh, every symbol x must occur in a derivation like this. From s you should be reach you should be able to reach x and then from x you should be able to derive a terminal string. So, for that we have seen that how to apply two lemmas lemma 1 and lemma 2 and you have to apply them in that particular order. The first one make sure that for uh, from every non terminal a terminal string is derivable, the second one make sure that every symbol is reachable from S. So, now you have this result every C F L without epsilon can be generated by a C F G without epsilon productions, unit productions and useless symbols. So, in which order you go about? Because we are without loss of generality we are assuming that the language does not contain epsilon. So, the first step will be remove the epsilon productions, because when you remove the epsilon productions you may introduce unit productions. So, first remove the epsilon productions, after removing them remove the unit productions, then after doing this remove the useless symbols, use lemma 1 and lemma 2 in that order. So, ultimately you will end up with a grammar which does not have epsilon productions, unit productions and useless symbols. Such a grammar is called a reduced grammar. So, we are interested in finding out the reduced grammar for a language. Now, one assumption we have made is that it has it does not have epsilon. So, we have assumed that 
epsilon does not belong to L, the language with which we started. Suppose what do we do? Suppose epsilon belongs to L, then how do we go about it? In this case, L minus epsilon can be generated by a reduced grammar. L minus epsilon will be reduced by a grammar. Now, you have to include epsilon. For that, what do you do? So, this is suppose this is generated by G is equal to N T P S. Then you have G dash where you add one more symbol S 1. Same terminals P union say P 1 I will put comma S the new symbol will be the start symbol. You add one more symbol S 1 to the set of non terminals and make it the start symbol. Okay. And all these productions will be there, but you may add a few more productions. And what is the set of productions P 1 you are going to add? First of all, you want to include in you want to include epsilon, is not it? You want to include epsilon in the language. So, you have a rule S 1 goes to epsilon. So, if you want to derive epsilon, you will use this rule alone S 1 goes to epsilon and then derive epsilon, no other steps involved. Okay. Other rules will not have epsilon on the right hand side, but starting from S 1, you also have if S goes to alpha belongs to P, add S 1 goes to alpha to P 1. If S goes to alpha belongs to P, the earlier start symbol going into alpha, then you also add S 1 goes to alpha. Okay. So, P 1 will consist of rules of the form S 1 goes to epsilon and S 1 goes to alpha, where S goes to alpha belongs to P. Okay. This makes sure that the start symbol does not occur on the right hand side. Now, alpha cannot contain, alpha belongs to P, the earlier grammar, the earlier grammar did not have S 1. So, alpha cannot contain S 1, right. So, S 1 will not occur on the right hand side of any production. And if you want to derive epsilon, you have to, you have to use this rule and this rule only and you will be able to derive epsilon. Okay. Now, if you have a derivation in G of the form S goes to some alpha then something etcetera. In G dash, you will have S dash goes to alpha, I am sorry S 1 goes to alpha. Same derivation you can have the first step alone will be changed. So, whenever a string is derivable here, it is derivable here and whenever a string is derivable here, it is derivable here. Apart from that you are also deriving epsilon. Okay. So, L minus epsilon is generated by a reduced grammar, L is generated by by g dash and in g dash you have the property that the start symbol does not occur on the r h s of any production.
the reason for this is if you have a derivation s 1 goes to this uh, some alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 whatever it is. If you have a derivation the successive sentential forms will be non decreasing in length length of alpha 1 will be more or equal to alpha, length of alpha 2 will be more or equal to alpha and so on. It will not decrease, but if you have S 1 on the right hand side the start symbol because of this rule any time you will be able to apply this rule the successive sentential form can reduce in length, you want to avoid that. In any way derivation you want to make sure that the successive sentential forms are non decreasing in length and that is why you want to avoid having S 1 on the right hand side of any production since you are adding this rule S 1 goes to epsilon that is the reason. Okay. So, whenever we have this problem with epsilon, epsilon has slight whenever you want to have the empty word there will in the proofs and all there will be slight problem. So, you want to avoid uh, writing a very lengthy proof. So, you make sure that the uh, grammar generated has this format. Okay. So, the next thing is we shall study two normal forms. What are the normal forms? One is called the Chomsky normal form. It says that every C f L without epsilon can be generated by a C f G with rules of the form A goes to B C or A goes to A, where A, B, C are non terminals and A is a terminal. So, without loss of generality we can assume that the language does not contain epsilon and we know how to accommodate for epsilon now. So, if a CFL without epsilon then it can be generated by the grammar with rules or of the form A goes to B C and A goes to A that is on the left hand side as usual for any CFG you have only a single non terminal on the right hand side you have two non terminals or a single terminal. On the right hand side you can just have two non terminals or a single terminal. So, every C f g you can bring in to this form this is called Chomsky normal form. How can you bring it? Let us take an example by considering an example it is much more easy. Let us take the grammar this you know that the language generated is a power n b power n n greater than or equal to 1. Now, we want to bring this to Chomsky normal form. How do we go about doing this? First step will be for every terminal symbol symbol introduce 
a new non terminal. So, for small a introduce a non terminal, for small a you use a and small b you use capital B. Now, the rules will become in this example the rules will become s goes to a s b s goes to a b a goes to a b goes to b. Now, you can see that this rule is in Chomsky normal form, this rule is also in Chomsky normal form, this rule is also in Chomsky normal form, but this is not in Chomsky normal form. So, you have to do something about it. So, the second step is if A goes to B 1, B 2, B m is a rule. Note that now you have made all the symbols on the right hand side as non terminals. So, B 1, B 2, B m are all non terminals now. So, this rule you can split like this A 1 goes to B 1, D 1, D 1 goes to B 2, D 2 like that up to d n minus 2 goes to b n minus 1 p n. The previous one will be d n minus 3 goes to b n minus 2 d n minus 2. So, at the end of the first step, after you have replaced every terminal with a non terminal, the rules will be either in this form Chomsky normal form terminal rules or rules will be of the form on the left hand side you have a uh, non terminal and the right hand side you have a string of non terminals. So, when you have this, when you have a string of non terminals on the right hand side, you want to have only two of them. So, you have to split this rule by introducing new non terminals d 1, d 2, d 3 etcetera up to d n minus 2 and split this rule. But you must be careful that if you have two such rules, when you want to split this rules you are introducing the non terminals d 1, d 2 etcetera. Another rule is there then you must introduce some other non terminal e 1, e 2 etcetera. You should not use the same non terminals there, because they will mix up and then create problem. So, in this example which we have considered, these two are in Chomsky normal form, this is no problem, it is in Chomsky normal form. The first rule alone is in not in Chomsky normal form. So, you introduce a new non terminal say d, s goes to d and then d goes to s b. You introduce a new non terminal and have s goes to a d and d goes to s b. So, instead of applying like this, the same result will be achieved in two steps by applying a d first and then d goes to s b when you apply it will be a s. So, without any problem any grammar you can convert into Chomsky normal form. Let us take one more example s goes to a s a s goes to 
B s B s goes to C. What is the language generated? The language generated consists of strings of the form W C W R where W belongs to A B star any string of A's and B's. Now, convert this into Chomsky normal form convert this grammar into shortened form is C n f Chomsky normal form. The first step is introduce a new non terminal for every terminal symbol. If you do that you will get s goes to a s a s goes to b s b s goes to c a goes to a b goes to b. These are in Chomsky normal form no problem. So, the other two rules you have to convert into Chomsky normal form. So, when you want to convert this what do you do? You introduce a new non terminal and instead of this you will have s goes to say a d introduce a new non terminal d and have it as s goes to a d d goes to s a. Now, when you want to convert this rule introduce another non terminal e not the same you should not use the same d s goes to b e e goes to s b. So, the effect of applying this rule is achieved in two steps by applying this first and then this. The effect of applying this rule is achieved by applying this and this. Now, all these four rules are in Chomsky normal form. So, every C f g can be converted into Chomsky normal form. There is another normal form called Graeba normal form. There are several normal forms for C f g, but these are the two which are mainly used. The Chomsky normal form is very useful in proving some results about context free grammars. Graeberg normal form is useful for proving the equivalence between push down automata and context free grammars and also sometimes in parsing purposes if the grammar is in Graeberg normal form it is easy to parse. What is Graeberg normal form? Every C f l without epsilon can be generated by a C f g with rules of the form a goes to a b 1 b 2 b m a goes to a where a b 1 etcetera are non terminals and a is a terminal that is on the left hand side you have a single non terminal on the right hand side you have a single terminal or a single terminal followed by a string of non terminals you may have one non terminal two non terminal three non terminals any number you can have. So, the rules are of the form such that on the left hand side you have a single non terminal on the right hand side you can have a single terminal or a single terminal followed by a string of non terminals. So, you can bring any C f g to this form let us see how we can do that. Again take the same simple examples s s goes to a s b 
S goes to A B, this we have already considered. The first step is for every terminal symbol introduce a new non terminal symbol. So, in let us let me illustrate after every step how for this example there are 5 steps in the conversion but this example may not use all the 5 steps. So, let me see how we can do this. So, S goes to A S B, S goes to A B, then you have A goes to A. This is step is the same as the previous uh, conversion to Shamsky normal form. Now, you find that because of this the language generated is not affected, the language generated is still going to be the same. First you will generate capital A power n b power n convert all this capital A s to small a s and capital B s to small b s. Now, these two are already in Greibach normal form. The second step here will be introduce an order among non terminals by renaming them. So, the grammar which we considered earlier you can call them as a 1, a 2, a 3. So, make s as a 1, a as a 2, b as a 3. There are 3 non terminals here. So, make s s S as A 1, A as A 2, B as A 3. You are renaming them. So, now the rules will become A 1 goes to A 2, A 1, A 3, A 1 goes to A 2, A 3, A 2 goes to A, A 3 goes to B. So, you are having an order among the non terminals. This is also very simple, it is just uh, the language generator will not be affected because just you are renaming the non terminals and calling them as A 1, A 2, A 3. The third step is involves the use of two lemmas, we will see what are the two lemmas. Lemma 1 is this define an A production to be a production with variable A on the left, an A production is a production with variable A on the left. Let G is equal to N T P S B S E F T, then there is an A production A goes to alpha 1 B alpha 2. For some reason, you want to get rid of this rule. Now, when you want to get rid of this rule, what should you do? Be a production in P and with B on the left, here B is a non terminal, 
with B on the left hand side you have a set of production B goes to beta 1, B goes to beta 2, B goes to beta r. A set of productions you have with B on the left hand side. With B goes to beta 1, beta 2, beta r, B is a set of B productions. Then from G you construct G1 such that G1 has the same non terminal, same terminal, but the productions are same. Let G1 be obtained from G by deleting the production alpha 1 B alpha 2. For some reason, you want to get rid of. We will see why we need this lemma later. So, you delete this rule, but when you delete this rule, the effect must be obtained by some other rules. So, in this when you delete this rule what you do is you add the rules A goes to alpha 1 beta 1 alpha 2 alpha 1 beta 2 alpha 2 alpha 1 beta r alpha 2. So, R rules you add then the language generated does not change. So, in essence what happens is In this grammar I have a de derivation somewhere I have alpha a beta al um, probably alpha a gamma I can write and the next step I use the rule uh, alpha 1 I put a goes to A goes to alpha B beta. I use this rule. So, A goes to alpha B beta I apply and the next gamma will be there and the next step beta will be replaced by some beta I. alpha 1 alpha uh, beta I beta gamma. then the derivation proceeds. Now, this rule you want to remove. Now, when you remove this you are adding the rules of the form A goes to alpha beta 1 beta, A goes to alpha beta 2 beta and so on, A goes to alpha beta r beta such rules you are adding. So, at this stage instead of using this rule and then replacing B by beta i straight away you can use the rule A goes to alpha beta i beta and write it as alpha 1 alpha beta i beta. in the original grammar G you may have a derivation which A is replaced by alpha B beta first and then B is replaced by beta I, but in the new grammar G dash you do not have this production A goes to alpha B beta. So, but instead of you have added these productions. So, instead of getting it in two steps like this straight away you apply the rule A goes to alpha beta I beta and get this then the derivation will proceed as before. So, the effect is the same. So, the language generated will not be affected. This is when you want to get rid of a particular rule for some reason. Then there is another lemma this also we will be making use in steps 3 and 4 of that conversion to Graybach normal form. So, let us see what is that. 
let g is equal to n t p s b s c f t and then this is a context free grammar then let a goes to a alpha 1 a alpha 2 a alpha r be the set of a productions for which a is the leftmost symbol of the right hand side. Such a such rules are called left recursive rules. A rule of the form some a going to alpha a beta is called a recursive rule. A rule of the form a goes to a alpha where a is the first symbol leftmost symbol this is called a left recursive rule. A rule of the form a goes to alpha a where a is the rightmost symbol that is called a right recursive rule. In many cases you may want to avoid left recursion. When we learn about parsing we will see that we sometimes we will want to avoid left recursion. But when you want to avoid left recursion you will be introducing right recursion, but that that is ok. So, that is what we are going to do here we want to avoid the left recursive rules we do not want to have left recursion then let us see what let a goes to a alpha 1 a alpha 2 a alpha be the set of a productions for which a is the leftmost symbol of the right hand side. Then there are other rules a goes to beta 1 a goes to beta 2 a goes to beta s be the remaining a productions they are not left recursive rules. Then you introduce you want to replace all the a rules by a set like this you have a new grammar where you introduce a new non terminal z and instead of having the set of a productions. So, the new grammar let g 1 be equal to n union z t p 1 s be the c f g formed by adding the variable z to n and replacing all the a productions by the productions a goes to beta i a goes to beta i z where i varies from 1 to s and z goes to alpha i z goes to alpha i z where i varies from 1 to r. So, earlier with a you have r left left recursive rules and yes other rules which are not left recursive, but when you want to replace you are introducing a new non terminal z and you are having 2 s rules like this and 2 r rules like this. So, actually what you are trying to do is the r plus s rules you are replacing with 2 r plus 2 s rules. Now, how do we justify this? So, you are having a goes to a alpha 1 a alpha 2 a alpha r, r rules with the, which are left recursive and a goes to beta 1 beta 2 beta s s other rules. So, r plus s rules you are having. Now, suppose you are applying starting from some a, then you have a alpha 1 and from this you are deriving something a i would put a alpha i 1. So, one of the rules I am applying here, then from this again another left recursive rule I am applying a alpha i 2 and from this you may derive something. Then again from this you have a 
alpha i 3 and from this you may derive something. You can proceed like this until you have a alpha i n and then here you use the rule a, a non recursive rule beta j beta j. From this again you can derive something. So, from this a the string derived is beta j alpha i n alpha i n minus 1 alpha i 1 the string derived is this ok. Now, the same string you must be able to derive with the replaced rules. What are the rules which you have replaced? A goes to beta i beta j, i j I can put A goes to uh, ok i i z where i varies from 1 to s then z goes to alpha i z goes to alpha i z where i varies from 1 to r. Now, how do I get the same effect with these rules? Start from a then use the rule beta j Then you use the rule alpha i n z you have such a rule from this again you can derive something. Then from this alpha i n minus 1 z then again use the rule alpha i n minus 2 z and so on until you have z goes to alpha i 2 z then z will go to alpha i 1. So, the string generated here will be beta j alpha i n alpha i n minus 1 etcetera up to alpha i 1 and from this alpha is again something else can be derived. So, the string generated is beta j alpha i n alpha i n minus 1 alpha i 1 here you have the same effect by using this rule first a goes to beta j z. So, beta j is generated then you can use the rule of the form z goes to alpha i n z then z goes to alpha i n minus 1 z and so on. So, you will get the same string beta j alpha i n etcetera. So, the effect of using such rules you can obtain from this also. So, the language generated does not change it remains the same, but instead of r plus s rules now we have 2 r plus 2 s rules and what have we achieved by doing this we have avoided left recursion, left recursion is avoided, but what have we done for that we have introduced right recursion z occurring as the last symbol introduces right recursion ok. So, these two lemmas we have to use again and again in the step 3 and 4 of the conversion to Graybach normal form. There are 5 steps there uh, we shall consider the examples and the procedure continue with that in the next class. These are not the only two normal forms there are other no normal forms as well, but these are the main uh, normal forms which are used especially Graybag normal form is essential in proving the equivalence between push down automata and context free grammars.